I'm going to tell you homie to homie, okay? I'm going to tell you, me and you, I mean, we're talking. Here's the thing, the way I look at it. You don't necessarily shit where you, where you sleep, okay? So you and I have talked about this in a different aspect as in you got to find the shit that works best for you. Because the shit that works for me may not be the shit that works for Joe Blow. And the shit that works for Plain Jane may not be the, the shit that works for Stevie, I don't know. So you got to find this, this shit that works for you. But the real deal is, it is a bunch of shit. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. But the real deal is, it is a bunch of shit. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Pretty much every company was about the same. Mm -hmm. Everybody paid about the same. You did pretty much the same, same thing. The difference was your personnel that worked within the company. Whether or not you can get along with Alan or you can get along with Jane or you can get along with Steve. Mm -hmm. But the companies were pretty much the same. It didn't matter what company you worked for. You were going to make the same amount of money. Mm. And you was making decent money, but you was going to make the same amount of money. Then you might find that one company like I found, which is a renegade company that, mm -hmm. you know, well, it wasn't no such thing as electronic log. So, uh, yeah, when you fuel, make sure you get your fuel on your logs at least that day you fuel. Mm -hmm. It don't have to be, if you fuel at 8 a.m., it ain't got to be at 8 a.m. I mean, it can be on there at 9 p.m. as long as that is on there. Mm. You know, yeah, I work for companies like that. I work for companies that was like, um, Hey, uh, oh, you, you have to you you have to show that you was fueling on your on your law book, yeah, or on your on your e. Well, no, lot, no, your law book uh, or, or your paper law. Oh, yeah, your, your paper, paper law. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, that's understandable. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, you know. So when they got to match it up with the fuel receipts, and right. This, that, and the other. You know, uh, we don't want no toll receipts. Mm -hmm. You know, just. Tell us how much it was or fax us a copy of the toll receipts, but we don't want no toll receipts. Man, we ain't putting that shit in our file because if some shit come back that your logs, your paper logs say that you were in Louisville, Kentucky, you know, good and goddamn well, it ain't no Ohio State toll road in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> right, right. So you can't, you can't have on your logs that you came from Memphis, Tennessee to Louisville, Kentucky, but we got toll receipts in, in your uh, account. So on, uh, you know, you got off the dang on interstate and in Toledo, Ohio, off the toll road because right. it ain't going to match up. Right. So we don't want that. Don't give us that. That was how I, that's how we did our paper log. Mm -hmm. But if you fuel in Louisville, Kentucky, I don't care what fucking time you fuel that you fuel in Louisville. Okay. So we could say that you were there. Okay. Okay. It, you know, fuel in Louisville and then put on your log that you fueled in. Dallas, Texas, because, mm -hmm. well, wait a minute. You weren't in Dallas. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, all, that's how we did that back then. Um, but you had companies, you had smaller companies that allowed you to do that stuff. Those, those were few and, and in between. Mm -hmm. Now you got companies like Super Eagle that are like those smaller companies, and they encourage you to do shit like that. Mm -hmm. But the real deal is, at the end of the day, you jeopardizing your career and, and possibly uh, your freedom mm. because there's no piece of paper to be torn up and say, this is how I did it. Now you got the truck has uh, an electronic footprint. You got mm -hmm. the e-logs and then you got the, uh, the, the trailer has a tracking device and shit. Some of your loads have a tracking device in the freight. They got all kinds of ways. And if we can't get you that way, that little electronic device that you pick up and say hello to, they track that motherfucker. You, you know what, they, you know what, it's sometimes like when motherfucking criminals, like when they, when criminals do criminal shit, and tell me why do they take their damn phone with them? <laughs> I, uh, seen a, I, I seen an episode, I seen an episode of uh, the first 48. The guy swears up and down that he wasn't there. The cops confiscated Damn. his phone, and his phone was pinged there. 
So, Man. so yeah, you ab- you absolutely right that if you you know when you know when you're on the phone, they could tell, they could tell when you're on the phone, they could tell where you at with your phone and all like that. So if you you know if you like ELD, you know if you you doing the ELD swap, the ELD dance, and you know FMCSA comes and do an audit, they can fairly say hey you know can we can we get that driver's phone and 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 um and you know and see what was up because if he was supposed to shut down in dallas at a certain time and for some odd reason he just kept on going we could see that off the phone yep yep and these cats don't understand that the companies, I don't even know if the, the, uh, these foreigners are even smart enough to figure that. They have to be because cell phone technology in their, com- in their countries are probably even further advanced than they are here because they're not as highly regulated in their countries as they are here. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, a lot of those guys, when you go over there, because, uh, you know, they've been operating on GSM systems over there long before we started doing it. They they do a uh, a SIM card swap. Right. Okay, so we, when we you're just up here, started, but, we just started SIM card, our, our SIM card swipe over here, like within the last couple right. of years. Right. So, and it'll just take a SIM card and just throw it away, put another SIM card in, and bam. Yeah, that's how they you know, used, it's, that's, it's, that's how they used to do it on uh on the wire. They 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 would take out the they would take out the SIM card. Swipe it into another phone so that phone won't be tracked or traced. Exactly. And I'm like, okay, you guys out here doing that bullshit in the game and y'all too damn stupid to even realize that you're letting everybody know where you're at, what you're doing, and what time you was there. I, but yet you out here bullshit. I, I was thinking, like I said, with all these with, with all these drivers, these former Super Eagle drivers, I, I would think Super Eagle themselves should like make them sign some uh, nine clauses or anything like that because they they spilling the tea on this company like like fucking water, bro. Like I'm sure Super Eagle really don't want nobody out there knowing that they doing the ELD dance, bro. And in other words, that ain't the attention that they want. Exactly. And and I don't know. Super Eagle ain't been in business a long time, but I'm going to tell you this. Super Eagle ain't the only company that does that. No, because, no, 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 um, no. I, I, came, I know. Um, I came, no, you know, I displayed. I, I came from a black ops company that, that did that. You know, yo, um, bro. Yes. What's going on, Sean? Oh. What's going on, Sean? Hey, um, I, I started my clock by mistake. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. Just uh, just certify the log and don't worry about it. We got it from here. Certify the log, came back in, reset. I'm like, okay. But I, I, I didn't almost take advantage. told you about the I one company take, that I called. I didn't take advantage of it, though. I called uh, when I was looking for a place to, uh, to work a couple of years ago. I called this one company. It was a, a company in the Chicago land area. I called them and I was asking the questions, you know, how much is your pay? How many miles and this, that, and the other. And he was like, well, we want our drivers to drive at least six to 700 miles a day every day. And I was like, well, every day, that, that's, that's a lot. I was like, you can't drive six to 700 miles every day. I said, because 600 miles times, uh, you know, seven days is 4,200 miles. And you might be able to do that one week, but you're going to run out of hours the next week. No, 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 no. We give you plenty of hours, plenty of hours. I was like, what? You have plenty of hours. You can run four or 5,000 miles if you want. I was like, what are you running? Coast to coast? Wow. Oh, no, 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 no. You can run many hours, many hours. A, we have no problems at all. Many hours. Is we, we go in there and we reset your clock and take many hours and wow. then give you brand new clock. And I was like, what? Dude, he's telling me this over the telephone. I'm just caught. He don't know me from fucking Adam. I could have been a DOT. 
And I was like, nah, man, I'm good. I don't think I want to work for you, man. Like, yes, yes, yes. You make many miles and make much money. Yeah, however much you want to make, you can make over here. And I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. See, those companies right there, I would suggest to people that that's like, that needs a company rather they couldn't find the company that they like. Like if the company that they like is giving them some problems, like you can't come in here because of your background, you're a felony or well, whatever the yeah, case, yeah. then those type of companies, I would suggest them to get with just to get the safe miles in. Like some companies want you to, well, we want you to drive, you know, we want you to have some safe driving for a year. Okay, well, I'll go with this company just for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'll, I'll, I'll go with this company just for that. But those type of companies, you really got to look out for and look at the red flags. And if you don't right. see, if, if you don't, if you tend to ignore that, you, 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 you setting yourself up for failure. Those the companies that you Big just time. those the companies that you just give the time. Those those are not companies that you want to give. You trying to build a career. You to build, yeah, yeah, you're trying to build a career or trying to retire from. Those not the companies. Because if they steady, oh. if they sitting there telling you the biggest, the biggest thing for them is the mouth, you can make as much miles and as much money, and they're not telling you nothing else. Then yeah, that's that's not the company that you're gonna that you're gonna build a career with. No, man, we ain't talking about we ain't talking about no benefits. We ain't talking about no paid days off. We ain't talking about no holidays. We ain't talking about the equipment. All we talking about is we can get you the miles and you can drive as much as you want. That's all we talking about. We ain't talking about nothing that really means anything. You know, I worked for a company for seven months. Before I came over here, I worked for that company out of Chicago, the A to B Cargo. Now, they, they, I don't even go into it, but they were four or five different companies and they were never where they said they were at. I figured that out real quick. Uh, they were never where they and they were Macedonian. Uh, so they were some over there too. But man, them cats was on some bullshit. They charged you for every motherfucking thing. Out the wazoo, if you was late on a delivery and the company got charged for your late delivery, they charge you. Even if it was your, I mean, the company's fault, they charge you. You know, you are not getting detention. You're not getting detention pay unless they collect the detention pay. So you can put in for it. But if the broker takes four weeks to pay them for detention pay, you don't get paid that detention pay for four weeks. If you get paid at all. Mm -hmm. So you know, what? you're supposed to be in there at two o'clock, but you got there at two o two, so we can't pay you. They they got the money from the uh, the broker, but they ain't paying you. Mm. So and, and, what, do you, uh, what do you oh, what do you let, say what do you, what do you say about this call that I got yesterday? So I I got a young lady that called me yesterday. She's a she's I I guess she's a third party recruiter recruiting for all these abc companies man like ncr uh, i'm talking to somebody NIV, like that yeah. nva nv and i'm over here like well what's the what's the name of these companies what's these abbreviations for like what she says uh cfi i was like oh okay i know cfi that's a you know mega carrier out of missouri i know about that one but then when i right. asked her my my alarm bell started to go off when I asked her and I said, um, well, where are these companies located at? Oh, well, they're out of they're out of Chicago, Illinois. Okay, Chicago land is a vast area, so give me a specific location, like Bolingbrook, uh uh Aurora, she don't know. Naperville. No, she didn't say I'm not that. asking you. No, she's I'm, not, I'm not asking, I'm telling you, she don't know. No, no, she ain't tell me she didn't know, bruh. She told me, and I quote, that the company said that they don't give out personal information until I give my application. I said, personal information? I said, how, how is a business personal information? It's a business, right? She goes. Because most of these motherfuckers are operating out of a little small office or their homes, and then you got to go over to 
this place where the truck is parked at, just parked there. Uh, it's an empty business park, and this truck is just parked there, and you go get the truck, and then you got to go to a customer to pick up a trailer. Mm. No, I've right. dealt with somebody like that before. Um, she got my name, uh, I think, for off the of ND, and she called me and said she was recruiting for all these other companies, and she gets paid for every person, and she gets signed up for this company, mm -hmm. but she's recruiting for like 10 or 15 different companies. Right. And I asked her where they located and she like several different places. I was like, yeah, but where? And she said, I don't know exactly. They won't give me that information until I give them your information and they run your driver's license and background check. And then when they approve you, then they give me the information to give to you. That must have been the same chick, bro, because that's exactly what she said. Well, that's what, exactly that's what I'm what saying. saying. That's what I'm saying. I was. That's what I'm saying. I wasn't asking you. I was telling you. She don't know. She's a recruiter sitting at home, getting fifty dollars or a hundred dollars for every person that she gets to this company, and she just worked. I mean, if you look on Instagram, you see shit like that, and Facebook about you know you sign up and they got all these different companies that they send your application to. It's the same thing with her. It's just she's sitting there, she get all your information, and then she shoots it out to all these different companies, and whichever one decides to grab you, then, you know, you do this, that, and the other. And I'm like, no. Right. I want to go, I want to slide up on them, and I want to know what's what. Because I done turned down jobs at two companies that had offers out there on the table, and I got in my car and drove to their yard and took a look around their yard and at their trucks and talked to their mechanics and talked to the drivers of the company. I was like, nope. One company was down in Mississippi and another company was up in uh, Wisconsin. I said, nope. Mm. You know, a, a, uh, what is, it's an old saying that best predictor of future actions is previous actions or previous reactions. So, Talk to some drivers and don't talk to that, that driver that's been there three weeks or the driver that's been there six weeks because they they only got a microcosm of what it really is. And more than likely, they're either getting treated real good or they're getting treated real bad. You're getting treated real good because you're new here and we're, we're feeding you all the good shit right now. You're getting treated real bad because you're new here and we're trying to fill you out, like you said about the uh, the guy that wanted to, uh, to go in there and tell them he want to make 75 cents a mile, which is what I make. And he want to be home every weekend and he want to dedicate a route. Okay. Nah, nah, you're going to get a whole bunch of, you're going to get fed some dog shit until we know who you really are. Yeah, and it's the same thing. Right. And it's the same thing. You're going to get one or the other three, four, five, six weeks. Ain't enough. Go talk to that driver who's been over here for six months been over here for a year or two you know i talked to drivers at this company they say how long you been there uh, two and a half years i'm like damn man i don't know how you can do it for two and a half years i was like well i first of all i had a different game plan and second of all once you get past that initial bullshit you can deal with this that and the other oh man i've been over here man three months man yeah my, my guy been over here like a month and he ready to quit well, you know, okay, I, I, well, that's that's what I had guys that that would come on the that would come on the podcast, and I, you know, in the consensus in the uh, in the comment session is this: like, yo, lockout. Why why don't you talk to drivers that been there for X amount of you know X amount of years? And what and what I do is I go back and I tell them. I say, well, the invitation is out there. The invitation is out there. Every time I reach out to a driver that has like maybe two, three years with, with said company versus a driver that only had like three or six months, you know, some of them that are winning don't want to come in and, and share their experience because they feel that if they share their experience, they might get some, they might get some blowback from the company. That's why majority of them don't do that. So when I say I leave my platform open for drivers just to come and talk, that's what it is. It's just an open conversation. They sharing their experience. Well, you know, I mean, well, I, I know this ain't for, for people that's actually going to come in and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to take, 
what he said at face value. But you got to understand, brother man only been there for like a month, month and a half, two months. And that's the blowback that I get from, from the guys over at Super Eagle. They'd be like, well, you know, I've, okay, been, over, so, I've been over here for, well, hold on. I, I've been over here for a couple of years. Why you, why you don't talk to me? Because you haven't reached out to me. You haven't reached out. Uh, you nah, haven't called you, me or anything uh, like that. I'm going to tell you homie to homie, okay? I'm going to tell you, me and you, I mean, we're talking. Here's the thing, the way I look at it. You don't necessarily shit where you sh where you sleep. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> so you and I have talked about this in a different aspect, as in you got to find the shit that works best for you. Because the shit that works for me may not be the shit that works for Joe Blow, and Thanks. the shit that works for Plain Jane may not be the the shit that works for Stevie. I don't know. Thanks. So you got to find this, this shit that works for you. But the real deal is it is a bunch of shit. So you may not like what I'm going to tell you. And you all didn't know the company. No, man, I'm telling you the real deal. You know, yeah, I make two G's a week. But every week I don't make two G's. And I got to watch my paycheck every fucking payday. I got to make sure that when I get my settlement statement that every damn thing is on there because I have to tell these motherfuckers I'm addicted to my money and I'm allergic to being broke. Now I'm addicted to money. I'm addicted to my money. Now I got to track you down and make sure you pay me for what I do. This shit is tiresome, but it's the shit that works for me because I can't work at Super Eagle. I can't work at some of these other bullshit because I got to do I got four over here. I got insurance over here. I got paid holidays over here. I got paid days off over here. I can get home when I need to get home. Okay? That's the shit that works for me. Thanks. But when you're running over here trying to do that 1099 and you're just trying to fill your pocket up, you ain't even paying attention to the shit that's in the game. So, you know, my mentality becomes, why am I going to tell you, although I could sit here and you got 5,000 people to listen and actually three of the 5,000 might pick up on what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but the other motherfuckers really don't even want to hear what I'm saying because what I'm saying ain't what they trying to do. Mm. So you get, you get old heads that just say, fuck it. Why even say anything? Because these young cats, their game plan is different. They, you know, and that's why they keep running the company like Super Eagle. Man, if motherfuckers listen to me and you, Super Eagle wouldn't have no motherfucking drivers. Not just all. not not just me. Not not just me, but just listen and 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 read what's out there about uh controversial company Super Eagle. You know, just read what's uh, out there. I mean, uh, of course, like I said, it works. I mean, there are drivers over there that are winning. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, and, and, if they, exactly. and if they are good for them, you know, and they have their reasons for not coming and exposing them, they got their reasons. Exactly. But for drivers, like but for drivers, like I said, that only been there for like a month, two months, three months, that's ready to come out and spill all the tea about the company. You know, you sometimes you, you know ain't been there long enough to do that, right? But I'm just saying you know, for but listen, I'm I'm just saying for me and for me for me and my platform, the recorder crawl channel, is is it's an open platform for, for people to come and discuss their experiences and their testimonies. That's it. And I I, I like the oh, listen. Oh, I got you. I like the I listen. I got you, man. Nigga, you do more than listen. You listen and learn. <laughs> you I give all praise to you, nigga. Man, you wasn't no dummy when I met you four or five years ago, but nigga, <laughs> you listen and learn. I listen to your podcast. Hell, I talk to you on the phone and I learn shit. And I'm like, my mama always told me you learn something new every day. Exactly. And when I be hollering at you, when I be hollering at you, I'm like, man, that, that's why I say, you the cat, man, that I know we had to cross paths at some point or another back in the day, but you the cat that I could have really went to school and hung out with because 
you listen and learn. And not only do you listen and learn, you put that shit to use. And you show other people and other people ain't fucking paying attention. I know from you alone, several companies not to fuck with. Just from listening to you. Uh, nah, I ain't even going to go over there. I ain't going to do that. Nah, nah. And you may think that you're learning all kinds of shit from me. Let me call my boy, Kale, and, you know, pick his brain. And I'm sitting here like, man, I'm learning all kinds of shit from Lockup, man. Hey, I'm calling back again. Need a little wisdom from someone who understands. Those that suffer always feel forgotten. How can I make sure you feel you're not? Uh-huh. Tell me if this music thinks enough. Never want.